Okay, we'll finish talking here about the M1. I'm sure you've heard enough talking from me. You'd like to see something go on. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you is at the back of the rifle, there is a compartment. And a shell will open it, but that compartment pops open. And in there is where you store your oiler and your cleaning kit and your combo tool. And we'll get into that later when I'm cleaning the rifle. I'll show you more about it. But here's your combination tool. I'll show a close-up of it later. But it allows you to take apart the bolt. It'll, it's got a tool on it so you can take the gas plug out of the end to clean the uh, to clean that part of the rifle. It comes with a chamber brush already on it that you insert into the chamber. You can work your chamber clean. A little something I like to use is later on it came out with a ratcheting one. It's just a little easier. You put one of your segments of your cleaning rod, and this is what the cleaning rod looks like. It comes in a little pouch. It also slips in there. Put a segment of that in there. And then you can ratchet it. You don't have to go back and forth. Um, this is a later model oiler. I kind of like these a little bit better instead of the two separate oilers. It's got two compartments and one oiler. And what's handy about it is you can put lubricate grease in one and a little light gun oil in the other. Kind of handy. They don't leak either. And let's see, we already talked about the ammunition. One thing I'm going to try and stress, because I'm getting a lot of questions about it, is the M1 thumb. So we may, we may have to do a couple of videos on that. I, 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 the other day I was watching YouTube and I literally saw a guy use a stick to insert the clip into the rifle. I saw another guy who was so afraid of it that he tried pushing it down quickly and it popped out on the ground and he nearly dropped the rifle. It's just, I, I need to take some time and talk about this. But this rifle won't bite you. You need to understand how it works and then you won't be afraid of it. This one is locked back right now. It can't go forward. It just can't. You have to release the catch for the op rod in here before the bolt will close. It cannot close any other way. Where most people get bit is when they're playing with it when they're not loading it. They're opening it to inspect it or who knows. But they'll bring it back and the bolt, there. The bolt will get, hopefully it'll hold up. Nope. Got it too clean. The bolt will hold up on the follower, and they think it's locked back. So if they should go in and touch that follower or bump the op rod, watch this, it takes nothing. If they just bump that op rod and they've got their thumb or finger in there, oh, oh I imagine that's just terrible. So we're going to talk about that. The other thing I've noticed is people don't load the clip correctly. The rifle doesn't care whether the last round's on the right or, right or the left. It just doesn't care. However, this is old school, and I hate to say it, but in the old days they designed it for right-hand shooters, not left-hand shooters. And the receiver has no relief on the left-hand side for your thumb like you would use on a bolt gun with a stripper clip. So you really only have this area, and you use your thumb to insert the clip. That's why you want the last round on the right, so it's over here where your thumb can work with it. As long, well, we'll just talk about it later, but it won't bite you if it's done correctly. As long as you insert that clip correctly, go all the way down, it's captured, the bolt can't go home until you release it. That's enough said for now. Um, I think from here we'll just move on. I'm going to show you how to load the clip. I'm going to show you how not to get the M1 thumb. Um, I'm going to show you how to load and unload the rifle. Nothing tricky, not topping it off or anything like that. We can do that later, and then we're going to show you show shooting it, and then we'll field strip it and clean it. And I think that'll pretty much cover the M1 until I get a lot of email. Hopefully it's favorable. And if you have any other questions, we'll dedicate some videos just to that subject. Um, it's hard to know what people know and what they don't know. There's people out there, you know, some of you are already bored to tears because you know all this. But there's a lot of new people out there we want to bring along that don't know anything about the M1, but they would like to maybe get one someday. So this, this video is dedicated more to those people. Um, something else I'd like to talk about 
is the CMP program, the Civilian Marksmanship Program. There's a lot of history with that, but it started back by started by Teddy Roosevelt back in 05, I believe. And what it had to do was to train civilians to use military weapons was the idea. And they made they made weapons and ammunition available. Well, long story short, it finally morphed into a 501c corporation um, that was set up by the federal government to recycle M1 Grands and M1 carbines to the general public. Now, you have to go to a shoot. You have to be under the direction of a range master who signed up with the CMP program, and it's really great because they're going to go out to a range. They're going to show you how to shoot properly. If you're lucky, you'll get to use an M1 Grand. You'll lo learn range etiquette. And the other nice thing, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really oriented towards young people. It's a great way to get them started and learn it the right way. The other one is the Johnny Appleseed program. That's a great one too. It's very it's youth oriented. Um, they don't they don't have rifles available from the armory, but they will take you out and show you how to shoot a rifle properly at the range. They'll teach you uh, sight you know sight alignment, trigger squeeze, target acquisition, uh, range safety rules, general firearm safety rules, everything you need to know. I, I, I can't stress those two programs enough for people out there. I think that's about it. I think I've covered everything I want to cover in this series of videos, so enough of me talking, let's move on and we'll go to the next video. Thanks for watching.